This is okay. Maybe maybe we should put maybe actually we should try it out now. And take it You think this is yeah, is about good. my size, isn't it? No, he's a bit small. Uh, yeah. he's, like, he's like here. Oh, he's so small. Oh. So this is it should work. Yeah, but it's it's good. It's good like this. Okay. So is it loading already? Yes. Okay. It's on. It's on, is it? Yeah. Because uh Yeah, I know. Like we might forget it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
long time ago. Yeah. I mean, friends, million. Yeah, Rafa. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think we met okay. somewhere. Okay. Hi, Maria. Hi, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, okay. That's, okay. That's okay. It's okay. Yes. You see, we're singing. <laughs> yeah, see, like, very good feeling. Very good feeling. It's good for the people, isn't it? Yeah, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. I heard. That's a good Yes, that is.
So let's uh, start with a little bit of uh, focus attention on the breath initially. Always uh, when we start to meditate on uh, breathing, or we start to do breathing meditation uh, by your side. Remember the, to do this body scanning with all the points you need to be aware of, of the posture.
and uh, we we're gonna try to do the nine uh, round breathing meditation. Uh, maybe most of you already know. Uh, usually, it's better to do a full visualization of the channels, but uh, we just will explain uh, briefly um, that. Uh, Accordingly, there are two side channels near to the spine, uh, the witness of uh, <coughs> width. Um, then um, the central channel is uh, the witness of the wideness, sorry, of a uh, finger. Uh, so more or less the double of the, any of those uh, side channels. So what we do is that with the left um, hand, we block the right nose, the right nostril, and then we inhale, thinking that the air goes to the left channel that goes uh, close to the spine. And then we, we change the finger to the other nostril, and then we exhale to imagining that the air goes through the right channel. Usually they explain that the channels, they, uh, the left channel merges, uh, introduce the end into the right channel so the air circulates like that. So we block, then inhale. Imagine that the air goes through the nostril up, going down to the uh, skull, below, just below the skull, and to the channel down at uh, just below the um, navel, goes into the other channel, then we exhale. Then the second, uh, this we do three times, then the second round is the right, the right hand, we block the, the left nostril, and then we nail to the right nostril, and then we again change, and we exhale, and then we do three times. And the last three rounds is to the two nostrils, we imagine, that it goes to the two side channels, and then these two side channels go into the central channel, and then when we exhale, we think that the, even the air comes to the two nostrils, we think that the air comes through the uh, uh, middle, in, into the middle of the eyebrows. <coughs> so usually it's uh, explained that it's to purify all the emotions and so, but we do. And then when we finish, we will do uh, two times the nine, uh, rind, uh, nine rounds. So when we finish, we just remain in the experience that it comes from this uh, meditation. Okay, so we do each other like yes. yes. Is it do you imagine it going like all the way or just just to the channels? We imagine that the channels are uh, going uh, just beside the spine, <coughs> and then it goes to the other one, and then. It comes yeah. just this circle. <coughs> it's like cleaning cleaning the channels yeah. in a way. But if it's not important the visualization, we just do the breathing, and then if we can, then we add this uh, visualization. Also, we it explained that the color of the channels, the right is red and the left is white, and then uh, the central channel is blue, but the inside is uh, red like that. But it doesn't matter much for, for this time. So we do just the uh, three times.
So when we finish, uh, we just try to remain in the state that is induced by this technique. Usually it's a state that naturally is free for free from uh, conceptual thoughts. <coughs> We try to keep this uh, state away from thoughts that is induced by this technique. So it's a, it's a technique that we can use to have a glimpse of the nature of our mind. It helps to, to just uh, lead uh, our minds to uh, a state that is a little bit more free from all the thoughts and emotions so we can see the bare nature of our minds that is just uh, awareness clarity like a mirror can reflect anything and can engage, relate to everything, to know everything. That's the taste of uh, this. <clears throat> and then is the basis uh, for further analysis. We want to know how it exists, that mind, or oh, it ultimate, ultimately existent. Uh, so we analyze how it change moment by moment. We observe how it's changing. And also we can analyze on this basis its emptiness. What we were talking about Mahamudra, the sutra aspect of Mahamudra of the mind. So traditionally, this uh, technique is uh, very much used, and then is very much His Holiness Dalai Lama taught in full uh, how it's done in fully with the movement and everything. But for us, this is the way also Lama Yeshe 
Buddha's teaching and many other lamas they teach. Uh, it's uh, they usually advise to do in the morning uh, to help to to uh, contact just uh, from the morning, very early in the morning, so you can when the mind is more clear and naturally more uh, free from these conceptual thoughts. This also helps to uh, enhance this uh, experience, and then we can just uh, uh, rest on this experience and get more and more um, acquaintance with this uh, experience. But also Lama Yeshe um, taught in a way, uh, as uh, I, pra I practice with uh, other students of Lama Yeshe that uh, were keeping this way of relating to the nature of mind. Another way is doing two steps that uh, we will do later. But just to know that uh, we can <laughs> start focusing uh, on the breath, on the breath so uh, when you focus on the breath then you are aware of all the contents of the mind that are emotions that are thoughts that are body sensations that are also uh, all kind of uh, uh, sensorial experiences and then uh, you just uh, switch uh, the attention from uh, breathing uh, to those contents of the mind. And then um, kind of uh, you tie your mind using the rope of uh, this breathing meditation and slowly when your mind is calm then you are aware of all these contents of the mind and then you leave the breathing attention on the in the back and then you uh, kind of are just being aware of what is happening in all the contents of the mind and then late, later uh, when you are stable enough then you and you are not uh, taken away by, by by any of these contents you are really focused uh, paying attention to them but you don't follow, you don't run after any idea or concept or thought, then you ask yourself who is uh, observing those uh, contents or what and then there are different techniques to uh, again contact with this uh, bare nature of the mind, this uh, uh, mirror-like mind that is able to reflect all these contents and is, this is another way to go and to have these uh, small experiences of what is the nature of the mind that is so important because all what happens in our lives is in our minds all our experiences are in our minds and to get a f a familiarity what uh, in what is this mind uh, to get more familiarity in how it works uh, what are the contents that uh, that it usually in in, um, in the Buddhist tradition it's explained in terms of the aggregates of the mind and uh, because it makes sense later for our uh, meditation so it's very important that we we familiarize with that <laughs> so good um, then we will uh, catch up from yesterday. Uh, even yesterday was really just a thorough in introduction. Um, what I will uh, take from yesterday is uh, the idea of what we mean by uh, trying to develop the wisdom of emptiness. And as I was saying yesterday, um, Usually, uh, uh, what can happen when we listen for the first time to emptiness or uh, after uh, some time of uh, attending some uh, teachings on Buddhism about emptiness, we are so much focused on the object side. This is what 
I was saying yesterday. That means that we are so concerned about what is emptiness that we put so much effort in that that we forget that that the real uh, big issue is to recognize what what is the mind that uh, see the things like that, see the things like with inherent existence and uh, see the things uh, existing from their own side that is the ignorance. So in a way the, the ultimate goal of uh, talking about emptiness is to recognize ignorance with, within our minds and the harmful effect that this ignorance uh, is uh, producing in us, no? and uh, this is really crucial because otherwise it turns just in a, a philosophical uh, explanation that it, it doesn't make any sense to our lives, and um, and we have to keep this in mind when we investigate about emptiness, because uh, we try to uh, make emptiness so special. I remember uh, one lama was saying. Uh, Emptiness is not su such a thing, such a special thing. I mean, to just kind of get rid of what is special is the wisdom that realizes emptiness. No, that's because this is what we have to look for to develop this wisdom of emptiness that helps us to deal with our emotions in a better way, and then uh, ultimately will lead us to liberation. And this is what I wanted to emphasize from the beginning when we are going to study about emptiness. Other way that I want, I like to say it is that it's changing from an static way of looking at things even to emptiness because um, because we always think in a static way not a dynamic way and I think the, the real taste of uh, what emptiness means and dependent arising is that this dynamic uh, uh, way of understanding the life? No, it's like, and why I say so? Because if we understand a little bit better emptiness, then impermanence is clear, a part of our lives, and impermanence is dynamic. No, our way to relate things is like a static, permanent, like solid, and then this this uh, uh, gives us rigidity in our minds. This this we have to recognize. This is the most important thing. How and these uh, seeing the things existing from their own side, 100% outside, makes our minds rigid and we are not flexible to accept others views because we don't understand our world that what is happening outside, outside really is very much influenced from our subjective perspective and this is the key in uh, meditating on emptiness is to have a taste the real experience that our world is very much our subjective world the result of our experiences on the past what we have really created there is a very big part would say you know we can go different schools in Buddhism, they will say 50% or whatever, no? And some, maybe they say 100%. But to say from the beginning is 100% is very risky. <laughs> Why? Because we think, oh, everything is like mine. Nothing is real. They are out. So this is the risk. And because it's not like that, means that our experience, 100%, depend on our minds. But this does not mean that reality outside is just nothing. This is a wrong understanding and it took so many centuries to you know, to refine this idea. This is why they have so many schools, you no? Know? Because some people even it's very useful to to have this um, approach to life that oh everything is mind, you no? Know? And because it protects you uh, from um, to follow too much uh, emotions because it's very useful for the I mean for the practice it's very useful to have this even if it's not 
uh, 100% precise no, about reality. The, the explanation about reality is not that. This is what in Buddhism is called chitta-matra uh, point of view or only mind. No? Uh, so it's not precise because it uh, neglects too much the existence of external things. And if we want to be really very precise, we have to admit that, of course, external reality exists. But how it exists to ourselves is 100% our thing. And I was reflecting how much this affects to us, no? Because if we forget about that, the moment we see things a little bit slightly different from other, because we have forget that this is our world, we don't understand that the same way he or she has her or his own world. And then immediately there is clash. But if we, this is so important in our lives, if we want to have a, a, a healthy life and a very good rooted compassion, to understand the same way I see these things because of my conditions, my history, the way I learn my education, my father, my parents, other person see it differently. It's her world and we can respect 100%. Really, we are equal no, in this regard. So a good understanding of emptiness has to support compassion, both hand with hand. In fact, we have to remember that our approach to deal with uh, ignorance and uh, to understand what is the emptiness is that all the destructive emotions are base, their base is fantasy, is not reality. But the other emotions, compassion, tolerance, love, they are rooted in reality. So this is why in Buddhism, wisdom and a method or compassion go hand with hand. If you, you we can have this uh, mis mistaken idea that oh, if uh, we develop uh, emptiness, uh, wisdom of emptiness, then compassion is almost uh, because sentient beings that not exist by their own side. We were talking about that, no? So, but it's completely wrong. I mean, it's not that way. We understand better because the way I exist is like that. Sentient beings exist the other, the same way. They have the same problem. They, they, they do f uh, uh, believe that their reality is the only one. They don't understand the, how their, man, their minds work in the same way I don't understand. So if I realize uh, this wisdom of emptiness, this is the solution not only for me, but for all other sentient beings. If I myself can develop that wisdom, then it's not only for me, it, it, it's for everyone. It's the solution for everyone. So, and this is the right approach within this Mahayana context to uh, try to develop that wisdom of emptiness. Yes. Um, I've been thinking that um, to see the reality and the nature yes. of mind. Yes. Um, in the, it's, it's a good way to understand relative reality, but ultimately, uh, mind has no inherent existence either. Yes. Like this. Yes. Um, what is said is like that. Yes. Um, but if, um, if, if, uh, if like the outside reality mm -hmm. is not in the nature of mind, how can, uh, how can it be influenced by karma? Just from the start. <laughs> this is the more, the more difficult question, no? <laughs> uh, well, fortunately, His Holiness talks about that. Uh, this is uh, our reference, no? It's a good... Uh, His Holiness, I think, I, I, I understood your question. Uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama says that one thing is karma. And karma is always linked to mind. Has to be involved a mind for that. 
but external reality is not and this is very nice because also Lama Sopa then comments on that, no? And it has its taste. Uh, what his holding says is external world we cannot say that because if there is no mind is karma, but we can 100% sure say that is law of cause and effect, follow law of cause and effect. Okay? And then I would like to... Uh, oh. <laughs> Then uh, you, what, but it, 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 it's in in the okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the the idea is that we have to differentiate what we call usually karma that involves a mind, an action of the mind, and law of cause and effect. Karma is within the general law of cause and effect, mm -hmm. law of causality. But it doesn't mean that everything that is affected by the law or follows the law of cause and effect is karma. Mm. Okay? But then the bait comes. Yes. <laughs> it's very interesting. This is why it's so uh, wonderful, no? Because, oh, then maybe this world, we say, no, and this is where the, the, how the, there is a boundary always, no, to explore. Uh, how the worlds are created because of the karma of sentient beings. But what uh, His Holiness go, goes very, I mean, very to the point is that we cannot say that a, a, a leaf falling from a tree is due to karma. This is what he says. Mm -hmm. And very interesting, isn't it? But if nobody, uh, if there's no cognizer, no valid cognizer to see the leaf falling, yes. then how is the leaf falling? And if there is a valid cognizer, then it is related to karma because it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's in the mind. Huh? Okay. We will go slowly into that <laughs> because otherwise, I mean, for the sake of the, uh, also the <laughs> streaming, maybe it's. Uh, it's uh, anyone is uh, yeah. listening it would be very difficult to follow but it's very interesting because uh, this is the, the where it goes the debate no but what you are proposing now is a different way of debate is it's not related to karma or not mm. is uh, if something exists or not if a valid cognizer is there it, it would be a little bit different uh, way of thinking but uh, yeah, let's uh, follow a little bit where we were, no? Because um, initially when I wanted, I showed yesterday the goals of, for this course, it was that um, we wanted to, to, to really focus on the idea that in Buddhism, when we talk about emptiness, uh, we don't want to uh, negate the existence of things or the I. This, we have to start from the beginning. But it's true that uh, mm, what it seems we have to do in the West is to go the other way around. It's kind of... Uh, because naturally we don't believe in reincarnation, I would say. It's not our culture. So it's very difficult for us to really think that there is a continuation for the mind. And when in Buddhism we talk about which I exists, we talk about that if we are very, very precise, ultimately the I that exists, it's only the mere I. And the mere I is the one that goes life from one life to another life. Because the mere I exist only uh, imputed on the basis of the subtle mind, the, 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 uh, the consciousness that goes from one life to another, this only level of mind. And that's the real challenge for us because usually when we meditate on emptiness, like we will do, and uh, um, 
we look for the I within the aggregate body and mind, but we don't usually consider because we don't have this experience or a subtle mind, no? Then, so, then if we don't really, or we don't uh, really understand or, or find, sorry, we don't find really this I, then we say, oh, the I does not exist at all. And that's not the way to meditate in emptiness. Um, because we lack the knowledge of dependent arising side. And the, the, the way dependent arising explains is that, okay, the I exists merely labeled. And we have yet no clue of what this means, merely labeled. And this is why uh, one of the goals of this uh, teaching or course is to understand better, no? Because if we don't understand well that, we will not be able to recognize what is really ignorance, the troublemaker in our minds, the source of all the problems and all destructive emotions. We will not, hit in, we will not be hitting the target. And it re this is really important. And we were saying that the best way, as I, I say, the approach probably is the dependent, the king of reasoning is the dependent arising because it gives you a better safe approach to understand what is really emptiness and what is referred to. That's very important. And at the same time, because if we follow this idea of the mere eye, we understand that an eye exists merely imputed on the basis uh, of this life like a body and mind, but the, the consciousness that goes life to life is the r right and correct basis of imputation of the mere eye, then we will have a taste indirectly that there is a continuity for the mind and this mind is the one that this person myself will achieve enlightenment. So. Dependent arising gives the information, the correct information that there is someone, what I was saying there, the subjective aspect, the wisdom, ourself with wisdom that will achieve enlightenment. Can you maybe give an example of things that dependent arising? arising like in practical? Yes. We, I have a, a very uh, nice slide there, but the problem is that we be, because it's it's, uh, it's done in PDF, then we cannot see the dynamics of that. But um, there are three levels of dependent arising when they when we explain, mm. and. Um, in terms of dependent arising, the easiest way to understand is that uh, uh, cause and effect depend, uh, dependency, no? You, to, to posit that something is an effect is because it's result of a previous cause. This is uh, every Buddhist school, even some non-Buddhist school, they would accept that. Uh, I think His Holiness talks about that, uh, I think, Jainism, I think, and some some aspect of Sankhya, I mean, within the uh, ancient context, they, I think he's, he says that. Is it possible to say that there's something, um, is there because of something else? Is exactly. Like Dependence means that. Mm -hmm. Dependence that it does not exist by its own power, yeah. in a way. It depends on others. Yeah. And it's very good because the, this level, uh, at the minimum level, you can understand that impermanent things, those that are products, that they need the gathering of different parts and aspects, to exist, so they are dependent, isn't it? Because they depend, like different parts to assemble, then it becomes this uh, thing. 
and uh, because they are dependent they don't last so this is how we understand that this emptiness it's wisdom because already is giving us some answer to uh, how the things exist in reality so impermanent things those that are products that are the results of gathering of parts and conditions and everything they don't last so it's wisdom it gives you some freedom from this uh, grasping to things uh, this tendency and then we understand and it gives already some dynamic approach so I could say I am dependent on arising um, my physical body so it's very difficult to uh, for me uh, to explain uh, so if we say uh, the I is imputed on a body and mind mm -hmm. body and mind are impermanent things so if the I exists on the basis of that the, okay good uh, uh, even is kind of I'm not following the, the but um, in ancient times there was an uh, it's very interesting no you imagine ancient times it was not despising them they were really high meditators they say no they could they had clairvoyance they could see oh past life I was a dog or something no and this life I'm human they meditate very high meditators samatha already there something no and then they thought oh but not so much wisdom they thought oh maybe acting like a dog brought this result is not like so or something like that no the same way they said oh I was a dog now I'm here or whatever there is something that goes from past life to this life must be something uh, that doesn't change no Atman I mean I guess like that no I mean I, I reflected like that it's not that they were really uh, kind of they had very good knowledge about uh, concentration and but they could not really explain well what was the connection between past lives and this life and future lives so they say oh there is a permanent Atman unchangeable I going from one life to another one okay yeah. this is what Buddha said is not like this he said you don't need to have this explanation I would say so he said whatever is changing moment by moment even this is a subtle mind that goes one life to another life is impermanent but it's enough to label I this is the I the person and they say it's like uh, well okay I don't go too much so this is the, the, the refutation of the Atman because uh, the Atman is the idea of a permanent independent and unitary self and this is a made up this is not something innate according to Buddhism is something that you have to philosophically have this is acquired by reasoning because intuitively we don't have this idea that there is such an eye uh, per, over there that naturally dogs and any animals what they have is the instinctive feeling within the aggregates some somewhere no but that philosophy because maybe because not because of um, just uh, uh, poor knowledge but because of the experience and wanting to give some explanation they they made up this 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 is why this idea of permanent unitary and independent I is philosophically acquired by reasoning we communicate as yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think also 
I, I can visualize this. It's like uh, something that is going like this, and, and here is life, and here is that. And it, it's just like the eye is just going along. <laughs> well. And this is the, the interconnection and the. Yes, and yes, and yes. But remember what everything that exists is imputed by the mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If everything that exists is imputed by the mind, I also is imputed by the mind yeah. on something that is not itself. That's, we will have to explore that. But the idea to, to we are we have to always remember we are trying to understand what is ignorance instead of, and then the ignorance what it does is it confuses the basis of imputation with the imputation so it's very easy sorry okay Please repeat that. No, I, can, I can I can I can uh, but for the uh, it's okay. So sorry, but I want to no, no, because it's very important. Wait, I can do it with a because lava sopa explains this very well. Very, very well. In, in, and the book is available here, it's virtual reality. And we will talk about that uh, during the meditation. Uh, so we were saying that the ignorance, one of the ways to explain that, of course, not the, the perfect, but real grasping way of explaining is that. The ignorance confuses the basis of imputation with the imputation itself. What this means? If I say, uh, sorry, no, okay, is this an A? No. Follow. This is very important. You follow because. You will discover the, the mistake of the mind. Is this an A? No. Please follow, follow. It's very important. Is this an A? No. 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 Okay. Is this an A? No. no. Okay. We have two non A's. One non A, another non A, you said. Yeah. I'm not saying it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an A? No. no. Yes. No. No. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying this, not this. No, no, no. no. So three non A's. Yes. The basis, the basis are non A's. Okay? Yeah. Even like this, also, not sure, maybe someone says A, maybe others no. <laughs> Again, the assembly together could be, not sure. So even the all the parts of the A, all the bases of the A, and the shape of the A, still not sure. But then, this is the trick, the magic trick, no? Like a magician. Then, mm -hmm. it's an A, no? More or less, we would say, yes, yeah, an A. I mean, we have to be, I mean, common sense. Now, that's the important thing. What was not an A, by any means, mm -hmm. now is an A. What made it an A is just meeting of the basis and the imputation. But this process is what Lama Sopa says, immediately we forgot. Mm -hmm. Already not there. But if we reflect again, and we do the process again, is the only way to catch the ignorant mind. So again, 
Anon A, Anon A, Anon A, Anon A, it makes a name. Okay? So ignorance means confusing the basis as the real A. But dependent arising, the way Lamasov explains, is that it needs the imputation. It needs the concept. Before the concept does not exist mm -hmm. a name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is, is yeah. that correct? Yeah? Correct, yes. So, then wow. We, yeah. Then we recognize it. What happened there? Something is in between. I mean, we are not sure yet what is, but at least, okay. This is what Lama Sopa says. Then, the way things appear and the ways they are produced, or they are, discrepancy. That's his holiness saying now very much. Yogi means that. Meditating, or oh, oh, the way it appears is like the A is from the beginning. Now, if you, that, that's what, that's the most important thing. Now, if we look again, already A is there. I mean, we cannot get rid of this uh, feeling anymore. It has its power, no? But we gave it the power. Yeah. I mean, together and we learn like that. But ignorance functions in a way that the power is there. It's like a nice woman or a nice man or whatever, no? Already nice there, the power is there. You, oh, attachment comes, no? Mm -hmm. And this is the strength of the ignorance. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so important, because if we just work on that, again, the basis of the A is not the A, like this, no the A, the, then it applies to every phenomena, including the I. Okay? That's, if you got that, I think it's just wonderful, because then you know how the mind works, yeah? According to Lama Sopai, I think it's wonderful. The very important point is that A exists. Do I understand the fact that A exists? Exactly. The end. Yeah. We never deny that. But it depends. It depends on. Okay, okay. So, one, one moment. The whole thing to explain about the two truths is to understand that this process that we did is the side of ultimate truth. We are not denying that for us, of course, if we look at an A in the room, of course, the A is there. The A is not here. This is not the A in the room. Or uh, your name is Maria. Yes. If we look for Maria in the room, Maria is not you or is not me. Maria is there. We are not negating at all that. This is the reality. This is a reality. It's a conventional reality, but this does not mean that it's completely false. It has a falsity in the way it appears, mm -hmm. but not in the way that it's a reality for everyone and we have to work with, that, with it, no? And, and Maria will get enlightened, uh, and uh, Maria is kind or whatever. So we are not negating this in Buddhism. It's we, re, I think it's really important to get that. But we have decided that it's A. Mm. It, isn't, it isn't A by itself. So okay, but I repeat again, because this is the real important concept. Uh, if we just um, focus on analyzing the way it exists, we are just directing our minds to analyze the ultimate way of existence of things. And this is ultimate truth world. We have to know that for Buddha, when he explained that, was to understand the ultimate reality. But he was not negating, and there is one slide over there, but I don't know now. I think go a little bit ahead. More? More? Yes, be aware of. 
The Buddha does not dispute with the world. It is the world who disputes. Means that Buddha was not negating conventionalities. Was negating the way conventionalities as are taken as reality by itself. And the only reason is because this mistaken mind is the source for him, according to Buddhist explanation, the source of all our problems. So then he taught about the two truths. Means in the realm of conventional truths, everything works, everything you get enlightened and you practice compassion, everything. But if we really want to achieve enlightenment and, and get rid of ignorance, we have to be aware that it is another realm. It's the way uh, the, the things really exist. Because this ignorance, again, it's uh, confusing the, the, the basis, the, 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 the conventionalities as the reality itself. And in a way what it's saying is that this ignorance is uh, making you to forget how much comes from your own mind in the reality. That, and this is the, the, the real message of the Buddha. You create your world. And you create your world in some percentage. And so you are the creator. You have all the power to produce happiness or suffering. So you are your own master, no? he said, no? And this is why he could say that, because of dependent arising, because of emptiness. Because the idea of teaching dependent arising to a very detailed point, very precise, that is sometimes boring, because it's true, it takes so much effort, is because it's the only way to reconcile both truths. All the philosophers, meditators, who were following an approach that we call it uh, different schools, let's say uh, realist, they call in English, that they call uh, Vaivashika and uh, I think Sautantrika, and also only mind Chittamatra, that is yeah, already Sanskrit tradition. Previous ones are linked to Pali tradition. And then Madhyamika, even Madhyamika, those who were following the approach of Svatantrika could not really explain this perfect combination of uh, both truths existing at the same time in one object. So at the level of appearances, a person like me, an ordinary being, I cannot see both realities of one object at the same time, nor even one of them that is the <laughs> ultimate, no. And the Buddha said that uh, to understand really that conventional truth is a conventional truth, you have to understand first ultimate truths. Because is what we were saying, ultimate truths, dependent arising, is the way to understand that conventional truths are mere conventionalities. Sorry. Yes. Um, but on the way to understanding ultimate truth, the way I understand it is that you start to see conventional reality, you see the process of the mind creating or labeling conventional reality. So. This comes before your understanding of ultimate reality. Am I am I being clear? Well, you have to notice the process before you can notice the. But the we were, we are saying right. sometimes maybe because uh, the English that to understand that conventional realities are conventional realities, you need to understand ultimate truths because before you confuse conventional realities as as ultimate. This is what makes us problem that we were saying about the A or the I. That we I then, understand. Yeah, yeah. Then, okay. yeah. And then what well, how, how if not by slowly noticing the labeling process, 
that the mind does. Yes, exactly. What else is the road? Because, I mean, that's not ultimate truth. That's just noticing how conventional truth or conventional reality is created as a process between mind and objects, right? So you have to start there. Yes. So the understanding starts in the realm of conventional truth. Of course, you use the realm, that basis. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you, I mean, it sounds the way you're explaining it, like, oh, first I have to form ultimate truth, then I can begin all the rest. I, I think yeah, it's, it's true. No, 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 it's the same. No, no, everyone. So what you are saying is that it's for granted. You know, because... Hmm. Sorry? Okay, it's very difficult to explain for me. But, I mean, now, the definition of a conventional truth is that what is found or met by a conventional valid cognizer, free from error, free from superficial causes of error. That it's another thing. means that has to be a valid cognizer means uh, a mind that is not uh, distorted by sickness or uh, mental sickness or physical uh, sickness, no? Like, uh, yeah? It's, it's more like uh, distorted by superficial cause of error. This is the definition. So a normal mind. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So a healthy, normal mind, we would say. Yeah. So uh, this is the definition of a conventional truth. And the definition of an ultimate truth is that what is found by a, a, a valid cognizer that analyzes ultimate truths. So it's very tricky. So it takes really very long time to slowly understand why we can say, I can say what I say is and is not contradictory what you are saying. Because even we use the realm of conventional truths unless we start to develop this valid cognizer of understanding ultimate truths we are not really getting to a taste that they coexist in the same phenomena so if you don't develop that understanding of ultimate nature of that object you will not be able to because it's dependent arising if you don't understand that there is an ultimate truth you will not really understand that there is a conventional truth because one depends on the other it's just amazing but it is like that while we take conventional truths as the only reality, there is no dependent arising. We cannot get a clue that this is conventional, if it is, if it, if it is, but we don't have the other side of the coin to realize that it was just conventional truth. And this is why it's so important the teaching on the two truths by the Buddha. But just from the beginnings, he says, and His Holiness said, no? At the level of appearances, there are two truths. Oh, then it gives you the space, the room, the context, where to analyze. What I'm now relating to now, it's only one way of reality, and it does not explain everything. Why? Because ignorance is there. And if doing this exercise, we understand that the way it appears and the way it exists differs is starting to taste that the way it appears, conventional truth, differs from the way it exists, ultimate truth. Okay. Yes, it's like that. It's difficult, but it's like that. What helps me often in this is like, you know, before we thought the earth was flat. And we thought that was true. But now we know different. And it's like we thought the stars were a hole in the <laughs> in the hemisphere. Mm. So it's like that, you know, we, we see an A mm. 
Have you think it's just an A? But we don't see it. Okay. It's the same no, no. thing as the, the, the message. I understand. The message is that it takes long and this is why logic and explanation is so important. Because we don't even have the right context where to explore. Because we have so many uh, prejudices and, mm -hmm. and ideas about that. And what it I can say is that if you follow the explanations of what Buddha uh, taught, then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It doesn't conflict with science. It doesn't conflict with your experience. It fits. It really fits. So with my limited uh, understanding, I mean, I say, I, I see no flaws. If you analyze, no flaws. Where, where you put this way, you put that way, it works it, with, with everything, with reality. So let's meditate, because it's a lot of <laughs> intensive, no? But nice, I think, yeah? Let's, no, no, I mean, because it's really... And then we are going to use again because when we talk about uh, meditating on emptiness, uh, usually it's easy if we use maybe example like the I, the, the A, sorry. But when we meditate, it's easier and to meditate on I, how the I exists. Okay? Yes? Just a small request. Yeah. Maybe uh, when, when the meditation finishes, yes. can you make a little comment? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, so let's use again the virtue and reality, the book from Lama Sopa Rinpoche, because it's, I think it's really so clear how to meditate to get this taste of uh, how our mind uh, works. So he explains that uh, we can do it uh, while walk, walking. Uh, but the, the goal here is to see the difference, as we said, the way the eye, when not uh, really analyzed, it appears to us, and the way it should exist. So we see the difference between reality and appearance in the context of our feeling of eye. So as we are sitting, also he explains, you can do it while meditating. And uh, we have to really now feel I'm sitting. I mean, usually we have to kind of uh, reinforce this uh, natural, but a little bit sometimes hidden, no? uh, we have this feeling of five, then we have to really now reinforce this uh, notion of I'm sitting, I'm sitting, it's clear, I'm sitting, no, we have to get to this, oh, I'm sitting, yeah, that's, I feel I'm sitting, no doubt. So we spend some seconds doing that. So I'm sitting. Then, when you have this uh, kind of notion, clear notion, and I mean, uncontrovertible, of course I'm sitting. Then, Rinpoche, Lama Sopa Rinpoche advises to then think like that. The only reason that I can say, or why I can say, I'm sitting is because the body is sitting. Besides that, nothing else. It's 
So we compare. Feeling before, I'm sitting, no doubt. But then we give the right explanation. The only reason is because the body sitting, then I can say, I am sitting. And we see the different approach, the different feeling we have. So we do it, each of us, we do it individually, it's very easy. First, I'm sitting, then the only reason, So, and then we have to see what is going on in our minds while meditating. If we lose the, the focus, then again we repeat. When we get the feeling of discrepancy, we just keep our mind tasting that. But if we lose, then again we repeat the process of uh, describing the situation we are experiencing. First, I'm sitting, then the only reason is that the body is sitting. We do it for five or six minutes. So I will try to help a little bit. If you want to follow, then you follow the, the way I reflect. So initially, there is some notion, some, we would say, superstitious mind that feels that the eye is somewhere within the body sitting and this is the reason that I am sitting because without analyzing looks like something concrete an eye is there this uh, mind is not clear it's just guessing there is an eye there this kind of superstition. 
not clear. But then we say the only reason reality is the only reason I can say I'm sitting is because the body is sitting. So this kind of explains that there is no such an eye there to find. You cannot find. And it's not needed to explain. Reality is that because the body is sitting, that's just enough to label I am. On the basis of the body, this I am sitting, it's enough. So what initially seemed to be there, an eye sitting, that's empty. That does not exist. does not exist like that. So we can say like that, empty. Non-existing like that. Not existing like that. But still, I can say I'm sitting because the body is sitting, and that's enough. So means merely imputed or imputed. Lama Sopa would say, Lama Sopa and Richie would say, it's like almost non-existent. Maybe we have this feeling, oh, almost non-existent. But it's just enough. This is according to Buddhism. There is no need to elaborate more, to posit that the things exist. And the feeling that comes that is not uh, enough is because of our past uh, way of seeing things. We needed to, to see things existing from their own side. This ignorance, this superstitious mind, is like a energy behind that give, give us this feeling that this is not enough. That if we develop more and more the wisdom, no, no need to to be afraid of that because it's just enough. I mean, it's not only just enough, it's the real solution to feel, uh, to feel really who we are, to understand really who we are and how the mind works and to really is the, the source and direction to happiness according to Buddhism. It uh, conciliates uh, our developing uh, compassion and wisdom and uh, reinforce the idea of our mind traveling, our ourselves as persons traveling towards enlightenment. This, this is their idea. So it's good to, to end because we have this tendency uh, from the past. Uh, because we have this tendency from the past to to see the things one way it's good always to end the meditation reinforcing uh, that, that this is the way things exist merely imputed and that's kind of convincing ourselves that is uh, just enough because I think at least my experience is that uh, 
we feel uncomfortable, no? And we have to to really work with that uh, feeling. In my case, uneasiness, no? Oh, it's, no, because it's what the Lama Sopha says. Probably for me, it means like that. It's almost non-existent, no? Because for the previous uh, mind, our ignorance or our limited experience, it, it would be almost like non-existent. But it is enough completely. Because when we are, um, I, I, I would use this uh, example, when we are just being uh, compassionate, uh, taking care of others, this feeling of I uh, is not really... Uh, it doesn't make really much part of uh, this experience or this dealing with the other person. So it doesn't really need. But when we are very selfish, when we are really concerned with ourselves, it seems that this is really uh, everything uh, turns around this, no? And it, ma it makes really uh, so, uh, we, it's so necessary, no? That everything exists because. Uh, I exist that way or uh, inherently or uh, very solidly. So this is why in Buddhism, uh, in Lojong practices, when we talk about uh, try to reduce our selfish attitude and be more altruistic, it goes really hand with hand. Because you understand that this selfish attitude is based on this misunderstanding of, of, on reality, on how you exist, how the I exist, you know? And, and this is the target, not getting rid of an I. It's getting rid of a false I, an I or an, a thing that never exists, like the, the explain, you no? Know? The horns of a rabbit. They never exist. Of course, we can think about it, we can conceptualize about it, but even we can uh, think about it, that does not mean that it exists in reality. So we can think about the I existing this way, that way. This is the Buddhist approach, no? But there are ways in which the I exists. But others, most of the, our uh, uh, prejudices or superstitions about how the I exists are not true. And this is the ignorance, and this is what we have to to have a healthy life. This is the Buddhist explanation. Any question? And any? Oh, it's true. One hour and a half. I thought it was one hour. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> wow. huh? but if you have a point that you want to no no before, you 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 then, uh, it was the break for the questions yeah coffee coffee too much <laughs> I hope it's useful very good very good, very good. thank you would you like one or uh, mm, oh no, no, thanks. <laughs> this is on or off? Uh, this is on or off? I feel a little bit. I think somebody put a computer in here. Off now, no? Yeah. And I want to have a look. Can you see that? Because, sorry, can you lift it up? Because it's on the So I don't know how you are in the picture. Oh. So if, if you just sit there, oh, can you sit there? I think it's okay, no? Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. And, and then I just put on silence. <laughs> We just put on, uh, on uh, so we, we don't take it off, but we put it inside. Oh, yeah.
let's uh, calm our minds for a while. Again, trying to focus our attention on our body, relax all our body. So, <clears throat> one of the good things um, <coughs> about this uh, thing is that it's uh, even complicated. Uh, we are so lucky, you know, because they are so. Uh, this here, this uh, tradition, the center offers that all uh, this uh, lineage of practitioners that are there, no, to rely on, because they have the experience of those things, and uh, they have uh, completed all these uh, paths and all these uh, practices. So we can, we have access, we can have access, and then that's the, so whenever we, we face difficulties in understanding some points, it's a matter of time, and uh, we keep putting effort and uh, we rely on the right uh, people and sources, so, and we can get uh, further understanding. So. It's good. Uh, this tradition is alive, and there are people that are not only understanding this intellectually, but they put into practice, and they have direct experience of that, and then they have the uh, skills to uh, understand what is needed you know, uh, in you know, in terms of our practice to get uh, to get to the, this point. And without leaving the, uh, no, no, back to the other one, without, without leaving the kind of the attitude of uh, meditate, meditative uh, approach, um, we had this uh, meditation before about the discrepancy on how the thing exists and how they appear to us. And then we use this meditation from Amasoka Rinpoche. But uh, once we have this state, this taste, sorry, this taste, uh, then we can rely to to our lives. Uh, what that's what this means uh, that the, I have this. Um, fantasize idea of how the things exist, how it affects my mind, why it's so important in Buddhism to recognize that ignorance, why Buddha said it's a kind of the troublemaker, what is behind all our sufferings. And then we can take the example of a movie or a dream. Or when, what what is the effect on our minds when we look at a movie that is we understand clearly, or a dream that is not reality? But uh, even that, how it affects sometimes a movie emotionally. Only way that it affects emotionally so much or a dream even, is because even we know it is not true in reality, uh, still we have this instinct to believe during that period that it is true. We forget that it was not true, that it is not true. So then it brings all our emotions good emotions, 
healthy emotions sometimes compassion and others also we get annoyed or frustrated or depressed because of the movie or the dream or imagine the effect of uh, looking in the mirror and based on a reflection then we also have different reactions or imagine the effect when we saw a mirage in the desert and we believe it's water there and then we are very thirsty then we we believe 100% there is water and we can quench our thirst but when read there is not so we reflect on that how this misunderstanding about reality can bring different reactions different emotions so this is the way Buddha explains to understand a little bit how this ignorance about the reality of the world is the trigger for all disturbing emotions so if we loosen this tightness this rigidity coming from ignorance we can relate to the world in a more flexible way more easy going much more healthy so let's meditate for a while because it's important to to know why we want to get rid of the ignorance what is the drawback what are the drawbacks really and uh, understanding that then we are, we will understand that wisdom of emptiness or dependent arising is so important not only for us but for every sentient beings even to reduce a little bit the, their sufferings or their problems the way they see things they are stuck or we are stuck in such a rigid way of seeing at things or looking at things without perspective at all And so why it's so important to, to do that is like the example of uh, a child that needs to take a medicine but doesn't know the benefit and the taste is not good enough then it's like he doesn't know that it will cure so you have to really try hard for the child to take the medicine but it, if we are more adults and we know, oh, this really medicine is very good, uh, even a little bit difficult sometimes, but you keep your determination, you follow really the treatment because you see the benefit. You recognize that you are sick and you recognize that the medicine is the solution for that same way if we recognize we have this disease or yeah disease of ignorance or the problem with ignorance 
So we we will have this willingness, natural willingness, oh, I should get rid of. Or if we open up our minds and we think, oh, everyone has this problem. Everyone. So it will give even more courage to undertake what there is necessary to understand it, to practice, to, to kind of, we say, destroy this ignorance. about reality. And the good thing is, the wonderful thing is, that this ignorance is also dependent arising. Nothing exists by its own side. Usually we get this courage because we grasp, oh, this seems unbearable, or it will be like a a very heavy burden, but it, this is why it's so important, because the moment you understand that the object that this ignorance is holding us through is not that, then that moment, as Lama Sopa said, when you apply the right antidote and you discover this object does not exist that way, in that moment, there is no room for this uh, ignorance or for any destructive emotions. As long as you keep meditating and you understand correctly that, there is no room. This means that it is dependent arising and this gives all the hope. Because the moment we understand emptiness, a little bit, whatever level, doesn't matter, we are developing wisdom. We are creating another step towards our enlightenment. Directly or indirectly, it depends on the level, but it doesn't matter. We have to be really happy, no? Is there a real antidote to that? So it's a matter of time. Not putting more uh, imprints on the side of the ignorance, and understanding emptiness is creating more wisdom. So, slowly, slowly, getting rid of all the imprints. That's the way, according to Buddhism, to travel to, through the paths, what we call the five paths, or the Sapa paths. Enlightenment. Because if ignorant ignorance is not existing by its own side, it's only dependent arising, it depends on the object of the ignorance itself, seeing that way things. This means that our mind, our nature of mind, is free from all these disturbing emotions. Our Buddha potential is there intact, is <coughs> just covered.
is, they are only a stain. Ignorance is a stain in our minds. Sometimes, of course, we say attachment is a very more difficult stain to get rid of, and ignorance a little bit more. But in any case, is uh, still a stain and can be washed. I remember um, Dalai Lama saying um, that in one commentary. Uh, of the Bodhisattva Charyavatara, uh, uh, it talks about destructive emotions. And I think at some point, the commentary from Kunu Lama Rinpoche said that it means that are not so strong that you cannot destroy it at all. So it was pointing out that the weakness or something of the, of the destructive emotions. So it's like giving us courage because uh, they seem very uh, difficult to get rid of, but uh, uh, if you know the right uh, method, then they are not so strong that you cannot get rid of, like uh, you need an atomic bomb, I think it was the, the, what His Holiness said. That, um, so it's very important so, to have this uh, conviction, I think it's very good for the mind to keep like that. So I think we can go to the yeah to the other one, this one yes no no the, the, you you were right right. So another way to to look at the things is that that this ignorance is the source of all the mistakes of the mind. So whenever, because the Buddha did not uh, go directly to that, in, uh, to, to that uh, uh, explanation about the ultimate truth in a detailed way like in the second Wheel of Dharma, he talked first in the first uh, Wheel of Dharma in the Four Noble Truth, he talked about this uh, uh, more in a uh, uh, how to say indirect way or not fully uh, way, no. Uh, but at the end, what uh, kind of uh, ties all these mistakes of the mind together is this uh, subtle misunderstanding of reality. So, as we were saying before, no. If you understand that is the dependent arising in a way, everything that is impermanent that needs to gather together. Everything that is uh, like a product that needs to gather together, that is a uh, composite of parts, then naturally is impermanent, is transitory, and it, this has an effect on the mind. This is very important, and uh, uh, or we we understand that uh, also something is not unitary. Uh, everything that has part, everything has parts, can be divided, or or not completely independent, not relying on others. And I like to, to use examples to, to see uh, why it's so important, how it affects our life. And because naturally we think, oh, everything I got by myself, you know, Depend, no, looks like not depending on others. How it affects this feeling of I, you know, and of it creates pride and it, 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 it separates you from others, no? Because you think, oh, I got by myself everything, no? So you forget about your education, your parents and everything. So ignorance is the basis for this mistaken. Sometimes His Holiness says that rooted on, I think it's, he says like that uh, roughly, that uh, Based on this ignorance, then it comes all this uh, uh, conceptual uh, uh, kind of misunderstandings. It's another level, no? That uh, the, the, that uh, we can say that uh, contaminated things or impure things are uh, pure things. And that kind of things are all all based on this uh, fundamental ignorance, no? Subtle uh, uh, ignorance. So. When we have this feeling of uh, inherent existence, or I and everything, so we can build up these uh, uh, negative emotions or destructive emotions uh, 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 upon it. No? 
like a pride. And um, yes. You know, one of the things uh, just contemplating this. Uh, one of the challenges with this is that we talk in this way. We actually, our whole language is based on I. Yes. Everything you say is based on I and me and this, exactly what we've got here. To One of the things I was contemplating while you were talking was that to make things actually simple and transitory, flowing, and grasping, is to change the language. Because everything we have is solid, fixed, me, I, you, then, at least in the English language, which is where I come from. Yeah, but... And it seems to be contradictory to be able to have this thought process going that you're talking about right now, and then the words that I have to use to talk about mm. the real world is, a, is a contradictory, and then I'm, I have become a little bit of crazy in my mind because the, 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 the mm. way I'd like to look at things, which seems to be a more healthy way of looking at things, doesn't actually fit to what's coming out of my mouth. Okay, I think, but this is, I think that we have good examples with that. I think Lama also the other day in one speech I saw, uh, he was uh, giving the example of the power we give to the words. I had this experience, I mean, kind of to go into your direction, but also giving some hope because it's not the word itself, it's the what we give, the power we give to the, the word is like compassion. Compassion 20 years ago, at least in my uh, environment, was seen as pity. More People didn't like this word. And after 20 years, and I think this is part of uh, Dalai Lama's and Buddhist uh, impact on the West, compassion is seen even in the scientific world and psychology and everything as not like before, like pity or something not we didn't like so much. I think this is, I, I commented with other people and we could say that roughly happened like that. So I think what you refer to is more the, of course, if we have built like with compassion, with the I, we have built this connotation that the I means I is the most important, um, I exist by its own side, we can find. So this is the work we have to do that, oh, naturally, this is all the heavy burden that this word comes within, comes with, no? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like bringing from the past. It, in our own experience has this connotation. So what we are now doing is kind of, oh, is it was like that, but now I know that this I, merely imputed I, exists in that way and not uh, the way it was uh, before. But is what uh, we were saying. This is the difference to understand intellectually that it's already very good and uh, or good enough and it protects your mind for further suffering and to a slowly slowly kind of bring it this intellectual knowledge to uh, emotional knowledge and more inner knowledge this is the real work and it takes and this is why it's so important to understand the dynamic process of what is ignorance Ignorance is kind of, uh, what to say, we have uh, built, like we have lived this imprint of ignorance, this imprint of ignorance. So all these, you uh, know, uh, we can say these black balls or whatever, they are there, no? So we take one, but still there are many there. So the work of meditating is, oh, I take this and then it's kind of more dynamic process. So uh, it's not so easy to uh, to reach this healthy kind of balanced state of mind and this is the I mean we were talking yesterday uh, no or today I don't remember with Bruno no how yeah it's we have to accept this is our reality but and then uh, but from there we can build another world you know and this is the hope that we were mentioning 
it's so important to to not get caught again on yeah this is a training no uh, w w Stefan was saying the other day looking at the good things even within oneself it's very interesting no how um, mind works and how one yeah how one ignorance acts as a, how to say the hook to another emotion that is oh taking this as negative and believing it and then feeling this uh, uh, is not possible to get rid of no this uh, negative emotion so it's uh, this is why dependent arising is wisdom and wisdom gives this freedom uh, not just by a mere understanding one one time no and meditation means this familiarize and and uh, related to that the other yesterday we were talking that uh, there are different levels uh, that it relates to this slide no different levels of understanding of emptiness and also there are different uh, uh, intensities in the mind that uh, understand those levels of emptiness remember that we were talking aside so it means that uh, in Buddhist uh, uh, psychology they talk the the way you uh, get more uh, into a deep and in, in uh, more intensity in your understanding of uh, emptiness uh, Mm, that it it starts from when you start with the doubt and uh, it goes to the doubt to uh, going into a positive doubt when you start to think oh uh, uh, emptiness maybe is the way the things exist or dependent arising is the way the things exist and then you uh, there is one moment then they say usually receiving a teaching from a, a lama usually they say a realized person that explains very really in detail so you have some uh, correct uh, guessing or assumption oh it is like that no so this is a, a, a still a weak understanding but at this specific moment with these specific conditions you had this Glimpse. Oh, it is like that, no? And it's correct. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it, you. I mean, if you you share with others and then, or you, it's it is like that. So, once we have this at any level of emptiness, that's what we say. Uh, we can say that the the basic level of emptiness that we we could say that it, it it's acceptable by all the schools in Buddhism is that there is not such an I that is permanent, independent, and unitary, no? By itself, this idea of Atman, no? Then you have this, oh, does, this I does not exist that way. And uh, so you have first this doubt. It was with every, any level, no? With this level, you have this doubt. Oh, it should, maybe it's that way, no? And then you get oh it is that way because uh, he explained so well this uh, uh, Dalai Lama or, or Lama Sopa or whoever no we, we came across and then you then you meditate reflect first reflect we would say in 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 precise term is reflect analytical uh, we can say analytical meditation but is reflection because usually when we use the term meditation in a in a, in a specific context means you have a certain perfectly without doubts this no we purely strictly saying because uh, it seems that once you have a certain this what we call through reflection and uh, reasoning we have no I mean we from any perspective we get to the point that this is like that that what I, I, I assume as correct in this teaching or in the, reading this book or whatever, no? Then you reflect up, uh, up to the point that you have no doubts at all it is like that from any perspective. And then this, when you have this mental image, is what they call infer inferential valid cognition. So using this 
uh, understanding once so and then kind of uh, meditating upon that object that is emptiness then is when you get to a direct perception this is what they explain usually so it goes more in the way that from an intellectual understanding up to more clear intellectual understanding to a really uh, emotional or inner no direct perception it's a long process and then we can talk about uh, this generally we would say I don't know but I don't want to mess it up but in general it happens to any level of uh, this uh, uh, refuting the that I that uh, is uh, philosophically arranged as existing permanently etc or what is the innate uh, conception of uh, true existence that is substantially existing I when we talk about the I or the uh, the more subtle way of uh, ignorance that is perceiving an I that exists from its own characteristics so I think especially to those two last ones I'm completely sure that there is all this process towards a direct perception and it, it's a, a way to get rid of ignorance. Usually uh, what they say is that um, these, uh, of course, it's easier to understand what is uh, the lack of substantial existence and this is something that all the schools uh, of Buddhism, progressive uh, schools of Buddhism, uh, they talk about and it's uh, really accepted by all but what is more difficult is to say that uh, uh, this existing from its own side is very specific to Madhyamika and, uh, and um, because uh, Chittamatra it applies only to phenomena not to the mind so this non-existing from uh, its own side or uh, what we say uh, truly existent no, it does not exist truly and um, in Svatantrika Madhyamika, uh, it, it, it says, it's a different way to say, it says it, uh, it does not exist truly, but it, it can exist inherently, you know, it has this. And but for uh, Madhyamika, Prasangika, truly existence and inner existence is no different. So when you say it does not exist truly, it means it does not exist in any way truly or inherent existence. It has different connotations because, and but this is more philosophical, so we can skip for now. And any other question? Uh, yes. When, when I try to do this meditation on emptiness, uh, I always seem to get caught up in my attachments, uh, mm -hmm. and they seem to get in the way. Uh, continuing and then I get hooked like you say with the emotion mm -hmm. so my question is uh, what is the role of renunciation do you need to have good renunciation before you can actually do this or what uh, uh, yesterday in the introduction general introduction we were saying oh uh, it's good that you mentioned that because um, when we are meditating on emptiness, if we don't have, if we have not built the right conditions, uh, in terms of, in Buddhism we say merit, or in terms of method, not, but is gathering the right conditions for the best result to happen, we could have this experience of fear yeah. that is related more that, I guess, the meaning of not having the merit is not having built enough this the side of the method that means in terms of a personal liberation is the thought of renunciation and in terms of uh, Mahayana or Sanskrit tradition is uh, not having built a uh, bodhicitta or compassion attitude it makes sense it, it's my guessing but it makes sense means that what you say no if you don't have what means really proper renunciation and proper oh, 
so good that you ask that because then I I, I connected to another <laughs> thing that uh, I heard just from His Holiness yesterday, you know, and uh, in the YouTube. And uh, mm, the thing is that what means renunciation it means that uh, you 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 know that there is a way out of samsara. And what is the way out, in general terms, is get rid of destructive emotions, and one of them is attachment. So, this is why I was doing this meditation, to understand why ignorance is suffering. This is the first novel truth, and second, no? First is suffering and causes of suffering. So, in a way, we need to uh, uh, acknowledge Know, to be aware of what are the drawbacks of these destructive emotions. So, uh, in general terms, then this is uh, setting us in the path to liberation. So, as I was saying, uh, I saw this quote from Karmapa, so nice. No, the, the best way to love yourself or to take care of yourself is to setting you on the path to liberation. That means renunciation. So it fits, and in terms of bodhicitta, thought is the same. So uh, you want to go to enlightenment, and the worst enemy is a selfish attitude that is rooted in the ignorance. So if you reflect how much is needed to get rid of the selfish attitude to benefit others and to develop your compassion, if you apply emptiness, the result is joy. No, I guess. What the, because they say you can have a, 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 you can have the fear or, or you can have the joy. When you have marriage, they say you have joy. The best way to get marriage is with compassion and bodhicitta. No, so when you you re realize that your worst enemy and everyone is selfish attitude, I, then it means that. You get rid of the basis for this attitude to, to arise. That is the ignorance. I mean, you blame. Ignorance gone. This I that looked that existed and it was the basis of my selfish attitude is no more there. Wow, what a release. Joy. I think we can, we can, I think it makes sense. But, I finish, sorry. But the thing is interdependent means that the more we understand dependent arising, the more also we understand the nature of suffering, the way out and re renunciation becomes more clear as a need uh, or devi we, sometimes it's called definite emergence, no? looking for defi definite emergent liberation, or I think. And uh, with the bodhicitta it's the same. The more you have, and this is linked to his holiness, the more you you have an understanding of reality, the more easy it is to uh, develop bodhicitta. And in fact, in the Mahayana tradition, they say, and it's the causes for bodhicitta are compassion, uh, bodhicitta itself, that uh, it uh, means something. Uh, very concrete that I'm not sure now to remember. I think maybe it's related to to vows or, or something. But uh, I, I'm 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 not clear about the connection now. And the third is uh, understanding uh, reality, non-duality, because they say non-duality because they can have uh, chitta matras. Even you don't understand fully. It it it, it encompasses all. Uh, uh, ways of understanding reality enough to 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 develop that uh, kind of enough understanding not only uh, in uh, inherent existence i think it, at this level i think it talks like that and this is explaining the chandra this text I, I remember and then i think we would say that more than 90% uh, this is what they say of uh, people who develop bodhicitta, they do on the basis of having realized emptiness, mm -hmm. inferentially. Remember, this is the tricky thing in Buddhism. When you say, 
uh, having realized could be inferential or direct. So if you just say realize, maybe it's referring to any of those possibilities. In inferential is the same as intellectually? Could say, yes. Okay. That, but without any doubt about it. It's a, a fully understanding. It's like um, they say like clear mental image of that and uncontrovertible the way you have fully conf convinced, fully confidence. It's like you put a hand in the, in the fire and you will, will get burned and you have no doubt about it in the way. Nobody can fool you about that anymore because you have fully convinced. From any perspective you can uh, reach that same conclusion. But it's not the... Yes, inferential value cognizes is that. But, but, but it's, not the, the, it's not the direct experience. Exactly, it's, it's not. But this seems obvious, it's a very easy logic. I mean, no. <laughs> no, I, I don't... <laughs> it's very good, I mean, if it's no, easy, I, it's, it's very good. Yeah, but it's, it does not lead uh, me to, uh, to any, any form of easy... Uh, no, it's just, I mean, all uh, discourse theory, uh, all modern uh, language theory says the same. So uh, it's, it's not hard to understand. Yeah, of course, uh, of course. And, and uh, you, can, you can talk to any, uh, not any, you can talk to university students first year at, uh, and they will know this. But, uh, but that does not mean, huh? What did they know? That, 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 uh, that what we label is not necessarily reality. That, you know, the mind is a part of that, that language is a part of that. This is Okay, we will go but, through it. But we will what go I through mean it. Is it that doesn't, that the understanding doesn't bring me to uh, peace or an easy no, but, but this is why. Fear. Fear is but this is why, no? This is why. Because I was, I was following your yeah. thing that if you don't have renunciation, I agree. Yeah. But probably, okay, I don't want to be naughty. But <laughs> your assertion that it's understood by everything, maybe it doesn't fit because according to Buddhism, if you read, and it, it's a good thing that you set up because not, maybe every, any one of us could think, oh, it's so easy, but if it doesn't work, then maybe it's not the right understanding. So it's very good what you say uh, because it's true, if you understand really dependent arising, the way they explain it functions, it does, it's really liberating. Because you understand that even this attachment is dependent arising, so it's, it's as Kunu Lama Rinpoche was saying, it's not such a tough thing. It's your ignorance still is working, and the moment the attachment arises, you have no deal with it, probably, I'm saying, in my experience, it happens. No, when I got stuck with one emotion, uh, is that I'm forgetting mm -hmm. the same w that the AI, a sorry, that it was it is it, it, it it's just existing uh, dependently. The moment I apply the the right reasoning, according to Lama Sopa Rinpoche, if you are applying the right reasoning, cannot coexist a disturbing emotion. And it's a good thing that uh, we bring this. So, in terms of direct antidote, antidote, if it's love, the moment love is there, cannot be anger. Direct opposite. So, according to Lama Sopa, the moment any, I mean, Buddhist uh, uh, practitioner, I realized, and the Buddha's teachings, the moment love is there, cannot coexist at the same moment. Okay, we use the general example, relationships. We say, oh, I love and I hate. We are referring not to the person. Oh, this is very clear in, in, in Buddhism. Person is a continuity, and in, within one person can coexist love and hate for the same object, or rejection, we would say, no? But in one mind, in one instance of mind, the moment love is there, impossible yeah. for hate, hatred. <laughs> okay, then for ignorance and any other, why emptiness it was for any other one, 
the moment you understand emptiness really no other one I mean hatred this is why they say it's a solution for any one of these emotions because any of those hatred attachment they have to have the conception of true existence happening the moment this disappears the basis for this emotion also gone so what you say is really wonderful because according to my understanding what means is that we still have not this real deep understanding of emptiness that is the direct antidote to that those emotions to arise and uh, it's very interesting and I would say more that is true that in our Western culture scientific knowledge we start to have uh, yeah this idea that everything is dependent to the mind that nothing exists from its own side in a way but this is a general knowledge that is not a real subtle understanding of emptiness in fact when uh, we were studying in um, and His Holiness had a, 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 a what to say has some input on that because when we were studying I thought yeah it looks like because some they say but yeah it's true but this is what quantum physics says Buddhism is what quantum physics says same mm -hmm. and uh, I thought well not so sure I thought because I think this is more the Madhyamika Svatantika approach this was my understanding because it, uh, it means that it depends some way and this is very Lama Sopa is very precise in saying that when the pain depending at the same time is not the way of Madhyamika Prasangika because according to that is he says no labeling on the label is twice labeling twice because in a way for if for something to exist you have to label at the same time means that there was nothing existing there it's impossible no so if something already was and you are recognizing is labeling on the label so it's okay it no it goes uh, it goes like that but we live like that okay <laughs> but it means that to exist there is 50 percent in a way this is the way of Svatantrika we could say like that roughly and for uh, the way Lama Sop explains that, uh, I don't probably catch the whole understanding of that, is that it's like labeling on the label because you are recognizing something there and then you put the label. But it has to be already there, otherwise you don't recognize it. But the Prasangika way of seeing things is not like that. It's more like the A. It's like the imputation comes before it appears so it's really interesting so you create it. yeah so. for something to appear like that and this brings to another uh, um, I th okay oh. no more oh. oh. yeah in Buddhism we differentiate between appearance and conceptualizing so ignorance because it's a dynamic approach appearance is a result mainly you create it like that conceptualizing is more like a troublemaker I believe like that I, I create like that so this is the chance and this is why his uh, Rinpoche, Namasopa Rinpoche, I think helps so much to in, in his way of explaining, no? In my case, other Lamas the same, but my main background is through him. So because the moment it appears, if you don't believe like that, that is what we do through meditation, then at least 
we are not conceptualizing like that, so we are not creating more samsara. We are not creating more trouble for the future. We are stopping creating more appearances of uh, uh, ignorant existence, that is, uh, more appearances for ignorance to happen. So it's a dynamic process, I think. You wanted to ask? Yeah, I think uh, this is okay now. I think it's already where they are. Cover? Okay. <laughs> yes. I think I understand a little bit of uh, what Bjorn was trying to ask. Because uh, if, uh, if, if when you apply the correct reasoning, then, uh, then there, cannot, there cannot be uh, attachment there. If, if when you apply the correct reasoning, it cannot be. Cannot. Attached. So what is the difference between that and direct experience? What is the difference between intellectual, mm. intellectual reasoning that, that dissolves attachment mm. and mm. direct experience? Yes, I will answer. I will follow a little bit what he said, and then go to you, what you said, and then uh, because it's a very interesting point. So what happens is what you say, no? According to what I understand, if you are not really getting to the point, it does not prevent these destructive emotions to arise. We can, but I wanted to mention uh, something that comes uh, to my mind. On the process to that, we have to remember that we need uh, some stability of the mind. And this stability of the mind is based on ethics, what we call ethics, concentration, and wisdom. What means that uh, ethics is a way, is a, a renounced way to deal with emotions. You recognize that are not so good, these actions, because they are motivated by distorted emotions. So, so it's a wisdom, it's a wise way, uh, uh, not uh, like uh, ultimate, taking in account the ultimate truth, but understanding the, how the world wo works. And so, if you stop to creating negativities, this means that afflictive emotions arise less, because you are kind of, this is the reason vows they work. Because if you take a vow, is that you generally understand that you are preventing actions that are motivated by a specific uh, destructive emotions. So this is why they say if you go to the want to develop shine or come abiding and or either to to practice uh, uh, wisdom of emptiness or whatever, if you have not built the necessary conditions, ethic way of do, uh, uh, doing things. What happens is that you are very familiarized with uh, emotions, so these emotions distract you for your, from your object. <coughs> so I wanted to mention that because also it's another perspective to approach. So we have to build the conditions in this way to have more stable mind, not so much distractions. <coughs> so we cannot even reach the point where our mind is still enough to get to the understanding of emptiness. <coughs> so, in this regard, what you were mentioning. Would you like some water? Uh, yeah, it's here, but uh, I first. And uh, thank you. But in this regard, what you were mentioning, Bruno, uh, first, to get to even a, a clear conclusion of uh, intellectual, you need some concentration, uh, some level. <coughs> And uh, in fact, talking about mindfulness, the other day Dalai Lama said, one way of being mindful is not only through meditation, is when, when you are also uh, going in the life, you are mindful of not creating negative actions or to follow uh, an ethical or uh, way of life, no? Oh, this is harmful, I shouldn't do. Mindful of that. He was mentioning that I, I found it very helpful for me, no? Oh, is it? okay. It's yes, true. I mean, it's we all know that, but I, for me, it was a reminder, no, that it's not only only that. So then it brings to the point that to understand intellectually, you need that stillness of mind. And then His Holiness says, and something good to remember, that uh, we can use this understanding to develop concentration, not the other way around. We were saying, no, that uh, 
um, they say bodhisattvas, most of bodhisattvas, they say, because they use, uh, as we said, this uh, uh, understanding of emptiness to develop bodhicitta before its previous, an intellectual, inferential valid understanding. Mm -hmm. So this means that you can use this object, emptiness, that is very interesting. Emptiness is an appearing object. It has, uh, it's an object that you can focus on. It's not nothingness. And it has many connotations. Later we will explore. But it means, I finish, it means that once you ascertain emptiness, it doesn't go to infinite or oh, then emptiness and emptiness and emptiness. Mm -hmm. So if you really catch emptiness, your mind focus on that is oh that's absence, non neg negative, uh, uh, non, non affirmative negation. Mm -hmm. it, in itself, you can focus on that. So then you use this object if it's the right one to develop concentration, and others you can use concentration first and then use this. Uh, Samatha <coughs> to then you explore emptiness mm. and then you get and then you progress through the path like that. You don't okay. think this object? Oh, yeah. um, it was just as you said, emptiness is an object, but there's no subject in the, mm? in the meditation of, of emptiness, no? Okay. Yeah, this is why I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned, as, uh, uh, yeah. How to say ex professor in, in Spanish is ex professor, but I don't know in English. Ex professor means uh, 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 ex, uh, specifically for that, no? Because this is the I, the the thing. You know, uh, emptiness is not not is not nothingness. It's something appearing object. It doesn't mean that it exists from its own side because also, also emptiness is empty. But the same way you can focus on an appearing object that is the Buddha or what emptiness should be also that has to appear to the mind and then what you refer to is wh when you have the direct experience of emptiness this is different yeah we agree yeah. Oh yes, we finish. Or yeah. you, I can, I can wait till after No. No, we finish now. Just put the. Sorry, just put go a bit, a bit. More. For, yeah. Okay. This was supposed to be the break, but <laughs> go a little bit. Let another one. This is a hermitage in Tibet. To do retreat when we go there, <laughs> but uh, we can leave it here, no? So to remind that uh, why uh, why ignorance is so important in this context, and then we will catch up from this point, is that ignorance is the first link of the interdependence, and uh, uh, if we stop ignorance, then we don't. The way we were saying, if, the way Lama Sopa says, if we don't believe, if we stop that, then we are not creating more uh, seeds of uh, samsara. That's already very good, no? And uh, and then, um, of course, uh, we don't get rid of the all the seeds that before they were there. And still there is ignorance in our mind and we have to... But at least we are not creating more samsaras, no? When it's, wow, it's, because usually we think, oh, it's so difficult. But if we one moment we apply, we are stopping, no? Uh, seeds for the future. So it's wonderful. If they say this is why so in so no so 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 important. We don't get discouraged that uh, because because. Only once we get it, oh wow, that's wonderful because, and I think maybe what they say that uh, ignorance, uh, understanding, just having a doubt about uh, existence or of emptiness or whatever, it, it shakes whole samsara. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can leave it here, like. Uh, I was confused about what you were talking about. Yes, we can give 
ask the question now and then we will ask later. Because it's directly later. related to what you were talking about. It's mm. like <coughs> yeah, we were talking about the intellectual understanding and then what to cheat and things like that. Mm -hmm. For me, it has been like that. This goes together. It's not one or the other. Yes. So yes. So, so when you say that that you, you you directly become compassionate by the intellect understanding. No, you what? develop bodhicitta. We will explain yes. about that. Okay. Yeah. Because the concept of bodhicitta yeah. is good to clarify. Okay. And bodhicitta has two aspects. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's very important. Okay. okay? So then we kind of come a little bit uh, um, down and then uh, we re reflect on the, the good energy and effort just using this Saturday morning to try to to look for explanations about uh, the root of suffering and how to really bring more happiness to ourselves and others. So just uh, rejoice and be happy about that. And uh, we uh, may dedicate uh, this energy to towards uh, a specific goal that is may we reach this uh, full awakening, full develop our full human potential and uh, with all the qualities, compassion, wisdom, so we can be benefit for others. Okay, thank you very much for your attention, really. Thank you very much. So how long is the break? We thought at two, no? Yeah. Return at two is okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we divided it into five instead of one.